Good morning everybody. This is Dr. Deepak Vyas, professor in the Department of Chemistry. And I will be teaching this course which is known as Chemistry 2 in this semester for all the branches of engineering. I will share this paper with my colleague Dr. Tulika Chakrabarti. She will be teaching you about the inorganic and organic chemistry of this course and I will be teaching you the environmental pollution part. Therefore, this course number is CH155 and the name of the paper is Chemistry 2 since you have read Chemistry 1 in the first semester and it contains the portion of the environmental studies. Therefore, this part of the syllabus I deal with, which basically contain air pollution, case history, then we will study about the environmental terms which will be utilized during our study. I will give you detail about the global warming and the greenhouse effect as well as we will study about the acid rain along with this acid rain I will give you explanation about the yellow color which has been uh, observed in the Taj Mahal that the white marble stone is now converting into the yellow color what is the basic phenomenon behind this thereafter we will study the chemistry of the ozone the importance of the ozone and how the ozone layer is depleted day by day after this, we will read about the smog formation, smog which is actually a mixture of the smoke and fog and I will give you two case history, one is about the London smog and the other one is about the Los Angeles smog and therefore, these two case history will make you understand about this smog formation phenomenon. Apart from this, we will also study about the thermal pollution, how thermal pollution is caused and what is the effect of thermal pollution on the human life, plant life and to the environment. We have topic on marine pollution, radioactive pollution, then we have chemical pollution. In the chemical pollution we will study about the effect of the fertilizers, the effect of the pesticides and then we will study about the detergent pollution and various other forms of the pollution. Therefore, this entire paper it is a mixture of the inorganic chemistry which consists of the bonding mechanism, then coordination chemistry and we have organic chemistry also which contains the stereochemistry portion and we have um, spectroscopy is also there and in my part I will deal about this environmental pollution. Therefore, first we need to understand that what actually pollution is. Before starting the pollution I will discuss some of the uh, events which are observed and then you will come to know that why there is a need to study uh, this paper. This is the example of the uh, plant which may be industry. You can see the black smoke which is liberated due to burning of the fuel. Therefore, fuel is the major source of pollution and almost all the fuel which are found on this earth basically it consists of carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, sulfur and a small amount of other uh, substances. Coming to the next slide, you see this is a earth, it basically consists of the air, then we have water, then we have biota, then we have soil and you see this is the industry, this is the industry basically which is uh, man-made and it is creating a threat to the earth. Basically you see chemical industry and the mining industry the exhaust gases 
all the uh, gases which are liberated due to burning of the fuel which is needed for running the industry, you see that this gases which is which was emitted from the chimney in the previous slide, you see it is polluting the air and daily the concentration of the oxides of sulfur, oxides of nitrogen, then hydrocarbons, then particulate matter and then ash content is increasing in the air. Similarly, it is the effluent. Effluent means that the waste water which is released uh, on the ground and it ultimately enters the main water bodies. Therefore, you see industry is the main source of pollution. It is polluting the soil also. It is affecting the biota also. You see waste which is disposed of. Now, the waste, it is also one of the major problem on this earth. The waste, when we see, uh, when we uh, study about the waste, we have a chapter on solid waste management. Basically, the waste can be categorized uh, liquid waste, solid waste and the gaseous waste. But the waste which is uh, emitted from the industry, basically it is a solid waste. Now you see uh, this waste, it is disposed in the air, it is affecting the air quality. Then this waste, it enters the water bodies also. The waste which is dumped in the soil, it is causing the uh, land pollution and uh, it is affecting the biota also. So you have seen that basically the waste which is uh, generated from the industry and there are several other sources of waste also when we read this chapter in detail, I will come to that. Therefore coming to the agrochemicals, now you see agrochemicals, the waste which is generated, it enters the water, the chemicals which are used like fertilizers, pesticides, uh, through aerial spray, they enter the main uh, water supply or they enter the air. So, you see it is affecting the biota also, the agrochemicals when they are applied in the soil as fertilizer, they enter the air and the water. You see how the earth is being damaged from several sources. So, these are the fuels which we are using, the fuel, any substance which on burning in the presence of oxygen, it gives energy and that energy is utilized for running the motor vehicles. Now the exhaust gases uh, which are liberated due to burning of a fuel mainly consist of hydrocarbons, it consists of sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxides, then we have a lead compounds because tetraethyl lead is used as one of the anti-knocking agent which reduces the knocking sound in the engine due to burning of this. Petrol. Therefore, the fuel uh, which is burnt for uh, motor vehicles, the exhaust gases enter into the air. You see, when you see the entire slide, you find that the air is being polluted, the water is being polluted, the soil is being polluted and therefore it has an overall impact on the environment. So, any substance which increases beyond a certain limit which affect plant life, animal life and which affect the environment, it is termed as pollutant. Coming to the... So you see the earth has become a garbage bin. It has become a garbage bin and therefore this paper has been made mandatory for all the branch of uh, science or anybody doing PG or engineering management courses to uh, so that every student and every uh, human being is being uh, made aware of this environmental pollution. Now you, you see this earth atmosphere. When we uh, see this slide, the earth atmosphere, we see that the uh, up to 7 to 16 kilometers, uh, this layer is known as troposphere. Above this is a tropopause. And when we move up to 50 kilometers above the earth's surface, there is another region which is known as the stratosphere. And in this maximum concentration of the ozone is there. In the stratosphere, there is a maximum concentration of ozone which is found in this layer of the atmosphere. Above this, uh, there is a tropopause which is between the stratosphere and the mesosphere. And when, we, when you travel up to 80 kilometers, then we have mesosphere. And above that mesosphere, there is a small thin layer which is known as mesopause. Then we have thermosphere. 
uh, which is uh, to 500 kilometers. So stratosphere concentration is uh, uh, up to 40 kilometers or 50 kilometers, and there we have the ozone concentration. Now you will see that ozone is very important for uh, ozone. It is very important for uh, us because it prevents the ultraviolet light reaching the Earth's surface. Because we do not need ultraviolet light and it mainly affects uh, and it causes, uh, it affects human being and mainly causes skin cancer. Therefore, this ozone is being depleted day by day. Why this is depleted? Because of human activity. And basically we are using chlorofluorocarbons and along with this there are several other factors like aerosol scans which we are using and we have atomic explosion on this earth then supersonic aircraft which are flying at a great height and these all factors are responsible for depleting the ozone layer and when the concentration of the ozone is decreasing day by day it, the uh, amount of the ultraviolet light reaching the earth's surface is increasing therefore it affects the human life and it causes the skin cancer problem. So uh, this was the study of the earth atmosphere. Let us see the composition of the earth atmosphere. Uh, main gases which are there percent by volume. You see that argon is there, then we have water vapors, carbon dioxide, neon, helium, methane, krypton, hydrogen, then ozone, chlorofluorocarbons, and you see that maximum portion of this uh, uh, consists of the nitrogen which is about 78% by volume and then we have uh, 18 to 20% oxygen by volume. But as I said that because of the natural activity or man-made activity, the concentration of the carbon dioxide is increasing day by day, the ozone uh, layer is depleting day by day due to pollution problems. Coming to the next slide what actually pollution is but as i said that before uh, going to this slide let me explain you some terms which are needed to understand this pollution first one it is known as first one it is said to be pollutant p o l l u t a n t therefore what are actually pollutants pollutants are unwanted undesired foreign substance which beyond a certain limit will affect human life and the plant life. Therefore, this is actually a pollutant. Pollutant, basically they are present in the nature, but due to human activity and man-made activity, the concentration of these pollutants is increasing day by day and it is causing much threat to the environment. There is another term which we will study which is known as contaminant, C-O-N-T-A-M-I-N-A-N-T. Therefore, what do we mean by contaminant? Basically, contaminants are added uh, by human beings like polyvinyl chloride, phosgene gas, then we have uh, plastics, then rubber, then radioactive materials. Basically, uh, the concentration of these are increased due to human activity or we human beings are adding these contaminants. And contaminant also becomes a pollutant when the concentration of these substances increases beyond a certain level. Then uh, there is a term which is known as primary pollutant. Primary pollutant. P O L L U T N T. Basically, these primary pollutants are gases which are present in the atmosphere or which we are adding from the uh, outside world. So, these are basically the gases, primary pollutants. And then we have uh, the main gases are oxides of sulfur, SOx, then we have oxides of nitrogen, NOx, when we, we have hydrocarbons, then we have several other gases which are there. This is, these are categorized under primary pollutants. Then, then we will discuss about the secondary pollutants, S-E-C-O-N-D-A-R-Y, secondary pollutants. And basically these secondary pollutants are formed due to several chemical reactions of the primary pollutants. Initially, when I started my lecture, I have told you that smog formation, entire chemistry of smog formation, we will study in this course. A smog, which is basically a mixture of smoke and fog, and ultimate 
result is the formation of PAM. PAM means that peroxyacetyl nitrate, or sometimes they said that it is peroxyacetyl nitrate. And the ultimate product of this smog formation is PAM, which is very dangerous. It affects the central nervous system and ultimately suffocation, and the person dies due to lung injury. Therefore, you have seen that the secondary pollutant, the best example is the smoke. SMOG, which is actually a mixture of smoke and fog, smoke plus fog. So these are some of the terms, uh, pollutants, any substance beyond a certain limit, which is unwanted, undesired, it becomes a pollutant. Then we have contaminant, I have said that, contaminant which we are adding from the outside and then Primary pollutants, these are basically gases which are there in the uh, atmosphere. Then we have secondary pollutants which are found due to chemical reactions of the primary pollutants. Now comes the definition of the pollution. What do we mean by pollution? Air pollution means that there is something in the air that we don't want. The combination of gases which make up natural air do not usually do as any harm and without the most important gas for us oxygen we could not survive. However, there is a problem when unwanted chemicals are added to this fresh air. Therefore, in general terms we can say that addition of unwanted, undesired foreign substance which affect human life, plant life and to the environment, it becomes a pollutant and thereafter, correspondingly, we can say that it becomes a pollution. In other words, I will give you one more definition. Any alteration in physical, chemical and biological property of the environment due to addition of unwanted, undesired substance which affect human life, plant life and to the environment, it is known as pollution. And if we are reading air, then it becomes a air pollution. If we are reading water, then it becomes a water pollution. And similarly, you go on because there are several types of pollutions which we will study in this course. Coming to the next slide, industry, power generation, motor vehicles, release pollutants that may lead to photochemical smog, haze and acidification. The main contaminants from outside here include carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxide and hydrocarbons and then we have ozone, sulfur dioxide and the microscopic particles. Let us come to the next. Primary pollutants I have already uh, discussed with you. Products of natural events like fires and volcano eruption and human activities added directly to the air. Secondary formed by the interaction of the primary pollutants with each other. These are the secondary pollutants. Smog is one of the. So, what are the sources? Basically, uh, before coming to this slide, I will uh, discuss that there are two broad sources of uh, pollution, uh, pollutant being added to the air. Uh, basically, they are the natural source, and the second one it is said to be a man made source. So, coming to the natural source, we see that on the slide, you very well see that volcanoes. It is a natural source of pollution. You, what are the contribution of this volcano? Is the sulfur oxides and particulates which is emitted? Then we have forest fires. Basically, it consists of carbon monoxide and dioxide, then nitrogen oxides. We have particulates matter also. We will study these in detail. Then we have the plants, hydrocarbons and the pollens which are emitted, decaying plants which releases methane and the hydrogen sulfides. Then we have soil which uh, hold dust and viruses, then we have ocean which have salt spray and particulate. Therefore, this is, these are the natural pollutants which are released uh, in the air or into the uh, soil. I'll switch over to the another uh, slides which will give you a broad picture of this topic which is known as pollution. Types of air pollutants, gases, SO2 and SO3, then we have oxides of nitrogen, it is NO and NO2, carbon monoxide, 
volatile organic compound mostly hydrocarbons then we have particulate pollutants smoke dust soot fumes aerosols pollen gas then we have radioactive pollutants yes of course radioactive pollutants are also one of the dangerous sources where they emit radiation continuously red on 2 2 2 then we have iodine 1 3 1 Then we have strontium 90, then plutonium 239. Therefore, these are some of the sources of pollutants. As I already discussed, natural source means volcanic eruption. Then we have forest fires, photochemical oxidation of terpenes, pollen grains of flowers. Then we have radioactive minerals present in the earth crust. Uh, now coming to the man-made. There are two big sources. First one is said to be natural source. The other one it is said to be a man-made source. Let us discuss uh, about these sources. The thermal power plant, which is generating electricity, and the word thermal means that it is uh, coal-based. We burn coal, liberate energy. That energy is utilized for the uh, production of steam. That is steam is taken to the turbine. Turbine blades move. Therefore, the mechanical energy is converted into electrical energy. We then we have several industrial units. If we talk of the industry, there are several industry which are releasing various gases into the atmosphere. Therefore, industrial units are the man-made. Then vehicular vehicular emission. Certainly, when we we'll, uh, study in detail, we we'll see that. Combustion is of two types. First one it is said to be combustion external, and the other one it is said to be combustion internal. And these motor vehicles are one of the major source of pollution through combustion internal. And uh, then we have fossil fuels burning. Almost all the fuel I have discussed that it consists of carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, sulfur, and on burning they form corresponding oxides, and these are, uh, are released into the atmosphere. And then we have agricultural activities. Automobile exhaust is the major source of air pollution. It releases carbon monoxide, 77 percent; oxides of nitrogen, about 8 percent; and hydrocarbons, about 4 uh, percent. Coming to the next slide, you see that these are the motor vehicles which are using the fossil fuel, and they are emitting various types of oxide. If carbon is there, carbon dioxide, nitrogen oxides, then we have. Some other gases which is emitted. Secondary pollutants formed by the reaction of the primary pollutants, photochemical reaction, smog formation, and acid rain is also the main secondary air pollutants. Therefore, you see that these are the secondary air pollutants which are emitted. These are the uh, you see that smog formation there. There is a smog formation. The hazy atmosphere, the visibility becomes very very poor. Sometimes it results into the aerial accidents also. So chemicals they react with each other. The presence of sunlight is there. A small amount of ozone is there. Hydrocarbons, oxides of nitrogen. All the, in in detail we will study about this topic. But these two pictures uh, say that a hazy atmosphere visibility becomes poor and there is a suffocation problem also. And the person dies due to trapping of these chemicals in the atmosphere. And basically. It is uh, a pan which is produced per oxyacetyl nitrate or per oxyacetyl nitrate. Uh, it causes serious uh, problem. Therefore, this is a picture of that slide. You see uh, one more picture: Los Angeles smog or the London smog. A very very hazy atmosphere, and all the chemicals they are trapped, and ultimately it results in the formation of poisonous compound, which is known as smog, and it is a mixture of smoke and fog. Definition parts we have already discussed about this and uh, air pollution. Air pollutants are those substances such as gases, mist, and particulate matter which are present in the atmosphere in such concentration that they adversely affect human being and the environment. And most of the pollutants are at very low concentration in the atmosphere. They are produced by the uh, natural source as well as by the man-made source. And man-made source are the fuel which is burned for the heating process, cooking process, and for the power generation plant and for running various industries. But uh, before starting this air pollution in detail, I will give you uh, discuss some of the factors which are responsible for any type of pollution on this earth. Means that. 
uh, overpopulation. Overpopulation, one of the biggest factor which is responsible for any type of pollution because the more the population, the more the resources are needed and we have to do more industrialization. Therefore, second point is rapid industrialization. Now, when we have industry, certainly there is economic growth, but on the other hand, we have to uh, take care of the environment also because industry, it releases uh, the substances into the air, into the soil, into the water. Therefore, overpopulation is one of the biggest uh, source. Then we have rapid industrialization. Then we have uh, urbanization, rapidly urbanization is taking place and the last factor which is known as uh, uh, deforestation. Therefore, deforestation is one of the biggest uh, source uh, of pollution because we are not growing trees, we are cutting the trees and the level of the oxygen is decreasing and the uh, CO2 it is increasing because these green plants they utilize the carbon dioxide for the production of uh, their own food the process is known as photosynthesis therefore this is the first uh, lecture I have uh, discussed about the terms involved I give the introduction of this chapter and in another lecture I will discuss about the air pollution the sources of air pollution the effect of air pollutants and how these can be controlled so this is uh, from me for today's lecture in another next lecture, I will continue with this and the detail of this lecture. Thank you very much.